Peace and blessings, family. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Um, I know y'all looking forward to the new year. We're going into 2020. And so today, it is Monday, and I'm here to share with you around 15 black girls and women who are missing throughout this here United States and how I will be sharing them and reason why there's so many of us. Because I want us to keep in mind that even though, you know, because um, we, we're, we're winding down this year, there are women and girls still missing even back from January of when we started 2019. So as we all get to celebrate and cheer and bring in the new year and toast our glasses, on our planet, in our communities, in you know your block or your neighborhood, there are black girls and women still missing. And so I wanna make sure as we approach uh, the last of this year that we remember these black girls and women that are missing because they are somewhere. And so I'm going to start sharing with you who they are because I have a lot, family. I have a lot. And first, I'm going to share with the first young sister that I have. Her name is Ashley Williams. She is missing from Chicago from the McKinley Park Southside uh, section. She was last seen on December 28th uh, of this year. She's 16 years old. She's five foot five, 345 pounds. Family, somebody has seen her. Thank you, Brother Matt. Somebody has seen her, y'all. I'm just gonna keep going out because I have a lot of, of, of folks to share, young black women and girls that to share. The next sister we're gonna be showing is her name is Albany Boom Boomy. Albany Boomy. She was leaving from Memphis, Tennessee en route to Dallas, Texas, and never made it. She is 34 years old. Uh, she's five foot, uh, five foot four, 160 pounds, and she. I'll I'll give the numbers out next, but I just want to first just you know show you these people, show you these uh, sisters and, and girls, y'all, family, young women. The next young sister that is missing, her name is. This look like uh, uh, Exvivia Wilson. Exvivia Wilson, missing October 18, 2019. She's from Somerset, New Jersey. She's five foot ten, 150 pounds. Somebody has seen her. People do not disappear into thin air. Somebody has seen this sister. The next sister I'm sharing, her mother just did a whole candlelight visual for her being missing. And this is the young sister who was missing from Trenton, New Jersey. Her name is Amira Hall. Amira Hall. She's been missing since July 7th of this year. And she was also taking medication for anxiety and depression. Look at this young, beautiful sister. Anxiety and depression is what the sister was taking medication for. Five foot, five foot six, 150 pounds. Somebody has seen beautiful Amira. And I think Amira either means princess or uh, one who is beautiful or something like that. But look at this sister missing. Y'all, somebody has seen her. Look at this beautiful young sister that's missing from Detroit, Michigan. Kamara uh, Griffin. Kamara Griffin. She is 13 years old. Last seen February the 19th. But she's been missing since 2017, so she still has not come home, this young sister. But I had to show it up. Though it's a couple of years back, people are still missing. And I can't imagine what it's like to have a child or a sister or a relative or somebody you know close missing in your family. This is Kamari Griffin. She's five foot two, 125 pounds, and she is missing from Detroit, Michigan, that Motor City, y'all. Somebody have had to have seen this sister. Next sister that is missing. She is missing from the south side of Chicago. Her name is Joanne Wright. Joanne Wright. And she's missing from December the 22nd. So that was last week. Um, she's 33 years old. She's 5 foot 2, 100 pounds. Somebody has seen her. People do not just disappear. It's not possible, y'all. It's not possible. The next young sister that is missing is, this look like Shadija. Anderson, she's missing from Bowling Green, Virginia. Uh, she went missing September the 18th. She's 17 years old. She's five foot three, 120 pounds. So from Newport News, Virginia, this sister is missing. Uh, so I know someone has seen her. So some of these now are going to be looking like the ones I just showed you. So I think in review, we got to find these folks, y'all. We got to find these folks. These are our people. This young sister right here is missing from. Richmond, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, back on September the 13th, 2019. Her name is Dejarina, 
Wilms. I hope I said Dejarina Wilms. She's 17 years old. She's five foot six, 130 pounds. Somebody has seen her um, because we still have people out here missing, family. Still have people out here missing. Then we have uh, their sister Amari Bryant. Amari Bryant missing from uh, Newport News, Virginia. Another one missing October 22nd. She's 14 years old. She's five foot one, a hundred and five pounds. Somebody has seen this dear sister, y'all. Somebody has seen her. All their profiles are on my page. Please, 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 please share them. Share them. We got to bring them home, family. We got to bring them home. This looks like um, Nar Naricia Boyd, 17 years old from Norfolk, Virginia. Missing this time last year, January the 4th. She's 17 years old now, but she was missing. Um, she's six foot two, 110 pounds. Somebody has seen her. She's absolutely stunning. And this looks like a prom picture. So, you know, young sisters still have hopes and dreams ahead of her. And we need to bring her home. They belong to us, family. These are our, these are our babies. These are our babies. And so the next girl, a uh, young woman is missing. She's a young girl. Her name is, this looks like Zena. Um, and Zena's last name is Carr. She's missing from Virginia Beach, Virginia, five foot two, um, 200 pounds, and she's been missing since October the 22nd. She is just 16 years old. Somebody's seen this dear sister, and we need to bring these young ladies home. I don't care what the circumstance, I don't care what people say. If the first thing you got to say is some excuse why they're missing, then you're part of the goddamn problem. And I don't care. I don't care if they walked off and they go, I don't know, smoke some, I don't know, whatever. They do not deserve to be missing, okay? So let's stop with the excuses and the conspiracies and keep our goddamn eyes and ears open and do not create the atmosphere that makes it okay for all of these black girls and women to be missing. Stop it. The next young lady that's missing, her name is Miracle Cook, a name like Miracle. Look at her. She's absolutely beautiful. Of course she's a miracle. She's missing for Norfolk, Virginia. This is back on March the 28th, 2019. She is 17 years old, five foot six, 140 pounds. Somebody seen Miracle. Somebody seen Miracle family. It's up to us to take care of us. It is really up to us to take care of us. The next young sister I'm going to show you is Lamia. This is uh, um, Doomson. She's been missing from August the 30th. Um, and she's five foot six. And she's also missing from Plymouth Rock, Virginia. Uh, five foot two, 190 pounds. This little sister is 16 years old. And I don't know, y'all. You look at these pictures. These, these are our future. You know, if the black woman is not there to produce, to nourish, to love, how do we keep going on the planet? So we're over here distracted with something that we think could be something, but this is what it is. These are black girls and women. If they're not safe, none of us are safe. This last sister that I'm sharing from Danville, Virginia, this is uh, Kitasha Fuller. She was last seen February the 28th, 2019. She's 17 years old. Five foot two, 98 pounds. Family, I share with y'all a lot of young girls and women, and I'm going to <clears throat> do my best to recap because I share with y'all a lot of pictures. All their profiles are on my page. Family, it is our job. It is our job to bring these young women home. I don't care if they're not blood related to you. Don't nobody care if they're not your blood relative. This young sister from Chicago, Ashley's missing. We got to bring Ashley home. This young mother right here, from Memphis, Tennessee, on her way to Dallas, Albany. She's missing, family. Somebody has seen her. All their profiles are on my page. This young sister right here is mixing. Uh, Avenia uh, Wilson from New Jersey. Somebody's seen it, her sister. Somebody's seen this young sister. Uh, Avenia missing from Somerset, New Jersey. Somebody has seen her family. People don't disappear. As we go into this new year, this has to be a priority. I don't want to hear nothing about black girls and women commission and what and we ain't talking about missing black girls and women i don't want to hear about it don't call and ask me to do nothing this young sister's kamara she's missing from detroit michigan family detroit this young sister is missing uh from there there's another young sister she's been missing since 2007 2007 this little sister's been missing uh, her name is this is kamara uh kamara kamara is missing y'all we got to find her i'm just doing a recap <clears throat> <clears throat> this young sister here 
34 year old sister is missing 33 year old sister is missing from Chicago South Side. her name is Joanne somebody has seen Joanne somebody has seen her somebody has seen her and here we have sister uh, Shadia who is missing um, Shadija is missing from uh, Bowling Green Virginia somebody has seen this little sister beautiful smile beautiful braces somebody has seen her Another young sister is missing from uh, Richmond, Virginia. And this looks like G. Dijonera. Sorry, Williams, y'all. This sister is missing. Somebody has seen her. Somebody's all their pictures. This is Sister Amara. She's missing. This young sister Amara is missing. And she is from Newport News, Virginia. Somebody has seen this little sister. People just don't disappear in the thin air. They really just don't. And we know they don't. This young sister... Uh, is missing as well. Mrs. Boyd, she's missing from Norfolk, Virginia. Somebody has seen her. And these, I'm showing y'all some young women today because if they're missing, it really messes with what we're able to do. Zia is missing. This young sister is missing. Again, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Like y'all, come on. People just don't disappear on us. Don't believe the hype. There's no spaceship. Somebody has seen something. We have to be much more vigilant in our communities when it comes to our girls and women being missing. I don't want to hear no excuses of why you think they're missing. Please stop doing that shit. It makes you look like you're condoning who's ever or whomever is taking these girls and women that we're somehow okay with that in the black community. And that, I know it's not what you're really saying. So quit with the excuses. Miracle Cook is missing, family, and she's missing from Nor uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And that's also where my ancestors were enslaved at in Virginia, so not far from there in Fairfax County. The next young sister that's missing is uh, Lamia is missing. And Sister Lamia is missing from Plymouth, Virginia, uh, is missing. Um, and then also we have um, the last little sister is Kitasha is missing. And this young sister is missing from Danville, Virginia. Family. Okay. I share with y'all a lot of people who are missing today. Let me just say this. As we look at these black girls and women being missing, we got to start asking ourselves some real questions. And a lot of those real questions has to do with how do we value black girls and women in their lives? You know, they may never even have the chance to discuss what they want to be. They may discover they want to be an airplane. They'll never know because we haven't put in time into finding them. We have to put more time and the finding the young folks that are missing. You know, these young girls, you know, they are our future. If they are not there, we cannot reproduce ourselves. We just cannot. This is the mother of civilization. She deserves to be a nurturer, however she wants to do that. She deserves to, you know, this is great potential that is missing. And so it makes my heart feel some way because I understand what potential means. You know, I watch a lot of things around history and culture and so and we do not protect these young girls and women in our community, then how can we ever really talk about the great potential or opportunities? How can we talk about ancestors and what we owe them if we are not protecting how the ancestors came here and who they came through? If we are not protecting, you know, um, that precious divine, for some people it's the divine side of the creator. Um, I always say create Chris, but that's just me. But I just feel like when you look at the faces of these young girls and women, for me, it breaks my heart because I see potential. I see what we're going to be missing on the planet. And I, and I know the truth that when it's over for the black woman, when it's over for the black girl, it's over. Game over. Game over. And I don't think we're going to see game over because there's so many things we got to do. There's so many things that we need to do. And if the black girl and woman is not here, and if she is not protected or felt safe, then how are we going to get to this place? The planet is needing us. The planet right now is crying, and the planet is a she. Because she is a life giver and life bringer. You feel me? And so if she is crying, that says something to us. And so I see these black women, it means something. You know, this morning I was watching... Uh, this thing, uh, this newscast about them shooting up a, a synagogue and some other places, and immediately the urgency from their immediate community was urgent. That's the urgency we need to have in our community. When people are missing in our community and they look like us, 
there should be an urgency. Not us sitting back smoking a cigarette saying we ain't got no power to do shit. I do not believe that. I believe all of this has to do with us and what we value and how we value and who we value and why we value them or not value them. We cannot have 65,000 black girls are missing. Some say 75,000 black girls are missing in this planet. And we still over here talking about some shit that really ain't got nothing to do with the price of tea that you put into your cabinet. No, we need to find these black girls and women. We need to make sure that we're not creating the atmosphere that make it okay for people to come and snatch our girls and women out of our community like it's nothing or to discard them as trash. Because I was going to do a whole segment on all this violence that happened with black women over the last couple of uh, weeks, but I, my heart was too heavy and I felt like I'd have got on here and probably started cussing everybody and their mom out because I would be so upset because it's not okay that someone don't see um, the value in black girls and women and think it's okay just to discard them. And then to hear a bunch of people make up stories of why somebody would shoot a person all in front of their children and all that kind of stuff because the person looked like us, we act like it's okay when they do stuff to us. No, it speaks volumes, people. It tells people about how we really feel about our mothers, how we really feel about our daughters, how we really feel about ourselves as women. It says something. And at the end of the day, what would this say about us? What would this say about how we felt about the black girls and women in our lives? And that's the question ultimately we must all answer. And we answer that by how we react to 65,000, some say 75,000 black girls and women missing. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe in pimping people's sorrows. So for me, this means something to me. Like most people, I really do have a story of someone in my life that was a black girl who was a year older than me that was murdered, kidnapped and murdered. And, and um, kidnapped, raped, murdered in her body set of blades. 1978. So I remember that like it was vividly yesterday. So I know this is not some new phenomenon. And the person who did it, you know, we knew this person. This was another young person. So sometimes we got to get to this place where we don't make excuses. It has to be some no nonsense to how we handle this. This is not the time for restorative justice. This is the time for just justice by itself. It makes no sense that all these black girls and women are missing. And we sitting up here on some fantasy dance because we do not value black life. And more importantly, it feels like we don't value black girls and women lives. So as we prepare to go into this new year, ask yourself. Ask yourself about your behavior. Ask yourself about, are you one of those people who create the environment to have all these black girls and women and it to be justified? Do we value black girls and women lives? Or do we sit up here and make excuses on why we think they're missing? Because it may be somebody that you know and that you love and that you trust and you just can't see them going to jail or the death penalty even though they took somebody's life. Or they kidnapped somebody. I hope all of these girls are alive. But I don't know, family. I think we're dealing with a lot of serial killers in the midst. I think we're dealing with a lot of supporting cast of characters on why people are missing in our community and black folks are sitting up here waiting for what we call the enemy to help us when we know the only person that's going to help us is us. I'll say this, family, before I get off of here. Thank you, sis. It's going to really speak volumes to the world about who we really are, the descendants of people who were enslaved in this country coming from Africa. See, when they get to this part of the century, they're not going to understand what the hell happened to us. Because I don't know about y'all, but I'm a descendant of a people who did shit in times that was like, I would never be able to see again in my life. And they made a way. And they had laws. And they were accountable to each other when people thought they were nothing. And so I do not buy the idea that we are helpless. I do not buy the idea that we can't be accountable and responsible and protect and love and respect each other. I do not buy that. I am not a damn robot. We are not damn robots. We come from the greatest people on the planet who survived things. We were all supposed to be dust by now. But the fact that we still here 
that speaks to something in us to us and it is our job to keep our eyes and ears open to make sure and, and check people's language and behavior because all of that contributes to the environment to why all of these girls are missing right now we have created this environment we have now I'm going to say the we because when you don't check it you are condoning it when you dress shit up, you are condoning it. What I miss in my life and in my reality, thank you, Sister Song, I know what you meant, sis, is that I grew up around a lot of elders who didn't take no shit. And they wouldn't let you put no shit out there. So you wouldn't go around them with some new idea you got from school, and they'd be like, hold fuck up. Because we don't do that here, where we're from. We are accountable to each other. Because they know what they had came through. They know what, what the score really looked like. Not some fantasy shit. They knew what it was like. They knew the beast that they was under. They knew what it was like not to be valued or protected or respected. They knew what it was like for their life to be so devalued. Who cares? Because you're just a nigga anyway. They knew that already. So they developed their own way of survival. They developed how to love and protect and respect each other. And that shit took work. Because <clears throat> at the end of the day, they already knew who they were. They knew that they valued themselves. They didn't care what other people thought. So we shouldn't be caring what other... We should care about the way we see each other. That's what we should care about. And we're going into 2020, which I never even understood how close 2020 was. I'm thinking of the Jetsons. And as we go further in to the time... And seeing all of these black girls and women missing. This is speaking to us people. There's a lack of respect that, that's happening here. And don't nobody want to hear about no historical bullshit. When I've come from a people who survived so much atrocities. And never blinked an eye. Because they had their own rules and own laws. And the value that meant something to them was their own family so with that family I share with you all 14 young folks that are missing through the year and I ask you all to please 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 share their profiles I'm thank y'all some of y'all do this every day some of y'all get stuff from y'all pages we have to keep them in our consciousness we have to keep them in our prayers. We have to keep them. When somebody want to start talking about issues that women and girls face, we better bring up these goddamn black missing girls and women. Everybody else going for their stuff, we need to go for ours. If you do not protect the woman, if you do not protect the girl, your existence is over. That's it. You cannot recreate her. So many scientists and articles come out saying, well, written articles saying how we are the perfect specimen of the divine. And that didn't come from no black folks. Because some of y'all need to hear this from white people. What was a white scientist who said it? The absolute perfect. But if she is under attack, and she is erased and eliminated, that means we in trouble. You heard? It's that simple. So with that, family, I hope you're preparing for your new year. Keep your families covered and other families as well. If you belong to a village, if you don't get the belonging to one, I'm not saying the village is perfect, but we help to make it be what we want it to be. I don't want people yes ma'am and me. I want people, if I did something out of pocket, call me. Because I grew up in a village. You know what I mean? I grew up in the village. And I think that's how we made it through all of the atrocities that we faced here as African people here in the United States. Because there was something in our core that we knew right from wrong. And it didn't mean all of us was righteous. But the people who weren't got ghosts because they know the righteous will come for you. You heard? 
So please, family, share, share, share. I share with you 14 black girls and women that are missing. Y'all, I basically do this thing, y'all, where I have to run like the switchboard. That's why you see me looking down. But I'm going to try really quickly just to show you their faces. Just to show you their faces. Just to show you their faces. This is the face of the missing. 65,000. Some people say 75,000. Missing. Missing. They are missing. We are missing. Somebody got to listen to help us find this missing. This is the black woman. These are black girls. These are the ones who produce the world. They are missing. How will we ever know their potential if we don't protect them? Absolutely beautiful. We cannot let them fall. We cannot let them be erased. They are valuable to us. They are valuable. And they deserve to have the life that we fight for everybody else to come into this country. They get here on the backs of our ancestors. Now we must fulfill what is owed to us, and that is for us to protect each other, to love each other, to make sure we get a chance at that reality. And family, with that, I'm going to say to y'all, as I showed you all their faces, please share their profile. With that, I just want to say to y'all, have a healthy and happy, blessful, joyous, whatever salutation you're used to hearing, that it's all good. New Year. And in 2020, y'all, let's pull together. Let's protect each other. Let's love each other. And let's make sure we leave enough room at the table for these missing and black girls. Peace and blessings, family.